Hi, my name is Maddie, and last year I hiked over 2,000 miles on the AT. And someday, I'm sure I'll stop talking about it. But today isn't that day. Because last week I released my documentary, A Sum of the Whole Experience, today I thought it'd be interesting to go behind the scenes, do some nature appreciation slash trail community appreciation and show you all how I got those shots. Real quick, I also wanted to mention, because I'd feel bad if someone was interested and they missed out on this, that over on my Instagram from now till March 3rd, 2024, I'm giving away, smoke, I'm giving away a day pack by Beer Mountain Life. Um, it is a very well-made, sturdy day pack and this pouch right here has insulated material in it so you can put ice and your drink of choice in it. And also it would have the Beer and Beautiful Places symbol right here. So, good day pack, giving that away on March 3rd. Now let's get into my top 10 favorite clips I took on the AT. And it's hard to say my top 10 favorite because I'm like, what if I forget something? What if my opinions change? And this clip I thought was not that great. I'm like, oh my gosh, that was so cool. So I don't know. Here's 10 of my favorites anyway. So this day was really beautiful. This was when I was in the Rhone Highlands. The fog was really thick. The twisty trees look awesome. So I set up my tripod and then just walked up a hill. And I love this because you can see how I'm kind of disappearing into the fog. A lot of my clips that I use are kind of short and it feels like you're going from place to place pretty fast. But here it's just a long shot of like, yeah, I'm spending all day walking through these beautiful bare trees and fog. And then of course with a tripod shot, you always get a walk back. What I've started to do is um, act like I'm going to use the clip while I'm walking away and the clip while I'm walking back. You know, I don't just, you know, make whatever face when I'm walking back. I still pretend like I'm actually out there hiking and I just don't know the cameras there because you could use either one. Now here's my favorite in the category of like people and through hiking culture. There were two tramelies. Um, two big groups that were hiking around the same time as each other. We both stayed at this shelter with a view and we were eating dinner and the clouds were rolling by and I just thought it was the awesomest thing. Um, the first time I tried this, the wind blew my tripod over, so I tried again. I don't know, it shows what our daily life was like. Everyone sitting in the grass, eating together, looking at a view. Time lapses always are just, I don't know. They make me think about the passage of time and how on this day, everyone would was eating together, but then some people sped up, some people had to get off trail or something, and it's just a cool capture of what life was like out there, in Southern Virginia anyway. It changed so often. My next favorite, it's pretty short, it's a static shot. You get some of the wind noise, and if you don't already know, these flowers are mountain laurel. They're pretty popular among the, uh, along the AT, and it's kind of a symbol of the AT. They were in bloom in May, I want to say, May or June, but this is the view from McAfee Knob, actually, which is a very... Um, the most photographed spot on the AT. So I got this iconic view, the ridges of Virginia, got this sunrise. Although I think you can kind of tell this is shot with an iPhone because of the way the sun looks in the clouds. Maybe not the most high quality, but there's also this kind of rainbowy thing in the sky and there's just so many colors and it's very iconic AT. Oh, when I came up with my list of top 10, this is the first one I thought of. This is Canopus Lake, New York. I set up my tripod. There are my friends kayaking, going across real quick. And there's the moon. 
up there, it gets more and more apparent, and then you start to see it in the reflection, and then the clouds change, a plane flies across. Oh, if I could redo anything in my life, I wish I had let that time lapse go on a little further, but it was getting dark, and like I have a limited storage space, I have a limited battery, so I didn't want to go on, want it to go on and just record like the darkness that I wouldn't really use. When I went back to get my camera and stop the time lapse, I was like, oh look, the moon was in the shot after all, and I wasn't, I guess I didn't remember the science of it right away, how the moon moves across the sky relatively fast during the night. I was just like, oh, the moon appeared in the shot. That's going to look cool. I didn't realize the moon like very beautifully moved into the frame and there was the reflection in the water. Oh, here we go. This is in Vermont. If you look at the map of the trail in Vermont, there's the up and down part that goes through the Green Mountains and then there's the east to west part that goes towards New Hampshire. That part is really like has a lot of open fields and views. It's very beautiful. I wanted to take a slow motion shot of walking through these overgrown flowers. You can see the bees flying around and then that one bee flies off at the last minute. So in slow motion, it looks so cool. And oh, if it was in focus, that would just be the best thing to ever happen to me. But at the same time, I love looking at that little bee on the flower and it goes off. This next shot is also a natural phenomenon that I just happened to be recording at the right time. Oh my goodness, I'm just gonna let it play and let it speak for itself. You can see a wall of rain start closest to us and go across the whole river. And where I was filming this, it was a river in Connecticut. I don't remember the name of it, but there was a little cave that my friend found. We knew it was going to rain, so we went there to wait out the storm. And I'm just filming the rain on the river and then, oh my goodness, it starts getting harder. There's the wall coming down. You can hear a smoke master saying, A1 spot. Glad we are not out in that rain. This next one, I was in the Whites. I was camping by myself. And normally in camp, I don't film myself too much just because other people are around and I don't want to be the one that's like, ah, oh, la la la, look at me setting up a tripod. Oh, can you please not be in my shot? You know, so this time I was camping by myself, kind of gave me an opportunity to film that. It was definitely dark when I was cooking my dinner and I'll just let it play again. That's me coming back from setting up the tripod. I wasn't going to um, put that part in whatever video I was making. But I really just like how a little scene is lit up by the headlamp. Like, you probably can tell there's a tent here and there's trees back there, but it's just like I'm in my own little world. Then you see the tent, see my gear, and then all of a sudden I'm in the dark. Because I was gonna, I didn't want to waste my headlamp battery on just sitting there waiting for the water to boil. It reminds you like how small you are in these big woods and it's kind of a scary experience camping by yourself, but it's also pretty cool. Oh, another shot from the whites. Look at that look of disgust on my face. Uh, I didn't mean it. I was just very tired and I, that's, I was saying to Smoke, are you filming? This is the only shot I think wasn't either handheld by me or on my tripod. I asked Smoke to film me up, going up this because it was such a steep climb. And then I knew there was a view and also starting to rain. Here you go. Yep. 
you can see those mountains in the distance. You can see like the cloud versus the blue sky. You can see the rain coming down. And you can tell that it's a hard climb up there. My hair looks so <laughs> greasy or wet or and messy. But I also really like this. If I could summarize the AT in one shot, it would be this one because one, it's raining. Two, you're on a hard climb, you're getting to the top, you notice a beautiful view, but you also want to go and get out of the rain, keep hiking. Man, what a time. I think spider webs are so cool and so underappreciated. They're so delicate and strong at the same time. Right now you can't see it, but this one is covered in water drops. There's some fog in the background. I think it turned out really pretty how this was kind of blurred where the tree branches were close to or more in focus. And there's those water drops and the wind. I feel like just looking at this shot, you can feel the cold and the wetness. This was the day after I did Mahusik Notch. All right, last but not least. Oh, I wish I had done top 50 or something. I could talk about this all day. Nice fall colors and then a beautiful reveal shot. This might have been the most um, famous viewpoint that I've seen at least of Katahdin, which if you don't know is the um, if you're going northbound anyway, it's the ending point of the trail. It comes up after the 100 mile wilderness. You know you're getting close. You see a bridge with a river going under it, but when you get to the bridge, all of a sudden, boom, there's this famous view of Katahdin and you're like, oh my goodness, I'm here. What? That's crazy. So after that happened to me, I'm like, okay, I have to go back and get a video. Beautiful time of year for it. Blue sky day. Oh, love it so much. Oh man, that makes me want to hike the trail all over again. So many cool things I would not have witnessed otherwise. Although I will be back to going out on new adventures in mid-March. What I said in the beginning about how I keep talking about the AD, that was just a joke. I know there are some people that are wanting me to get back out on new adventures though, and that is coming up, I promise, in just a few weeks. But what about you? I've got to share some of my favorites, but what have you captured, whether that's on video, in a picture, maybe just that you've seen with your own eyes, that you were in the right place at the right time, everything worked out. We have a beautiful world and this is just one way to bask in it.